Hello everyone, welcome to this extensive lecture series organized by Center for Computation Technologies, Pune. This particular lecture is part of the advanced module for the multiphase modeling course. In this lecture, we will have an introduction to multiphase flow modeling available in commercial software Fluent. That is, we will mainly see how to set up a multiphase model in Fluent and what are the basics that are required for this. We will not go much into the detail of individual models or how to actually do a advanced multiphase model simulation in Fluent. But we will just see an overview of various options, how to turn on various models, what are the various input parameters, and where exactly to put these input parameters. So before we begin, let us have an overview of what we are exactly going to study in this particular lecture. First, we will see different type of flow regimes. Multiphase flow is usually classified into different flow regimes depending upon various factors. We will see these different flow regimes in detail. After that, we will see what are the multiphase models available in commercial software Fluent. Then we will see how to select a particular multiphase model and what are the different criteria for selecting them for our problem. After that, we will see the process flow to set up a multiphase model. That is, which steps you should follow one by one or what is a checklist to set up a multiphase model in commercial software Fluent. Then we will see various inputs and where to give these inputs for setting up a multiphase flow problem in Fluent. We will end with the summary of whatever we have studied. So let us see different type of flow regimes. Now the first question comes to our mind is what is a flow regime? Flow regime is a geometrical pattern or distribution of flow usually recognized by visual inspection. That is if we visually see a multiphase flow, we can categorize the vast range of multiphase flows into different regimes depending upon how they look. Such different regimes or geometrical patterns are known as flow regime. So let us begin to see what type of flow regimes exist among multiphase flows. Now before we start studying flow regimes, the first question that comes to our mind is what exactly is a flow regime? How do we define it? A flow regime is a geometrical pattern or distribution of flow usually recognized by visual inspection. Whenever we see any multiphase flow phenomenon, either in industry or environment, just by visual inspection, we can infer that some typical geometrical pattern is associated with it. There are categories of such geometrical pattern which are said to be flow regimes. In short, or in simple terms, this is nothing but how the multiphase flow looks like. Now, there is another terminology associated with flow regime called as flow regime map. Flow regime map displays type of flows occurring as a function of flow rate. That is, if we go on changing flow rate, the flow regimes may change. So, within specific range of flow rates for a specific geometry or for a specific problem or phenomenon, we have a associated flow regime. As we go on changing the range of the flow rate, the flow regime goes on changing. So if we plot a graph, a pictorial graph where the x-axis is the flow rate, we can say on y-axis that we obtain different flow regimes. That means we can categorize the flow rates into different flow regimes. This is nothing but the flow regime map. Now on a broader sense, the flow regimes are classified as dispersed and separated. Under the dispersed flow regime, secondary phase is distributed or dispersed as drops, bubbles, droplets or particles in a continuous phase. Whereas in a separated flow, we see distinctly separate or parallel streams of two or more phases. So whenever we see drops or bubbles or droplets, particles etc, we directly infer that it is a dispersed phase or a dispersed flow regime. And when we see distinctly separate or parallel streams having an interface between them, we can say that it is a separated flow. So let us see some commonly observed or classified flow regimes. We will start with the first type that is bubbly flow. Bubbly flow 
is disperse gaseous or fluid bubbles in a continuous fluid. So you have a continuous medium and there is gases or bubbles dispersed throughout the continuous medium. Second is the droplet flow. In this, there is dispersed fluid droplets in a continuous medium instead of gaseous bubbles. In terms of visualization, they mostly look something similar to this. In droplet flow, you have mostly fluid droplets, whereas in bubbly flow, you have gaseous bubbles. Next is the stratified flow. In stratified flow, we have immiscible fluid separated by a interface. So, an annular flow can come in this type of flow where you have an immiscible fluid where you have immiscible fluid separated by an interface. So there is a distinct interface between the two immiscible fluids. Free surface flow is also shown here where you have two distinct fluids separated by an interface which is generally a free surface. Here there is a air and there is a fluid at the bottom. Next type is slug flow where we have large size bubbles in a continuous fluid something similar to this. It is different from bubbly flow because the size of the bubbles is very large here. The next type is particle laden flow in which we have discrete solid particles in a continuous gas. Also, if industrial application or industrial classification of multiphase flow are fluidized beds which consist of vertical cylinders containing particles where gas is introduced through a distributor. We have already seen an example in our earlier lecture of a fluidized bed. Next is slurry flow. Slurry flow is transfer of particles in liquids in the form of slurry. That is a thick mixture of different size particles. We also have three phase flow where we have more than two phases present in a continuous phase. We also have three phase flow where the total number of phases involved in the flow are three or more. Let us see an example of evolution of steam water flow in a vertical boiler tube. As we see at the bottom there is just liquid. As the liquid heats up we have bubbles of vapor coming into the flow in this particular bubbly regime. Next the bubble size increases and the bubbly flow regime transforms into a slug flow regime in this particular region. Now as the slugs increase in size we have a distinct interface between the slug region and the water region. That is the vapor slug region and the water region. And the flow transforms from slug flow into annular flow. You can see in this a central annular flow regime is created and there is a distinct interface between this central vapor region and the water surrounding it. As the annular water heats up what we get at the end is a continuous flow of vapor but there are water droplets dispersed in this flow. So this is a dispersed flow regime but here the continuous fluid is water vapor and the dispersed fluid is water droplets. In the end when these water droplets also heat up and transform into vapor we have a continuous single phase vapor flow. So in this single boiling phenomenon what you can observe is different regimes of multiphase flow as the flow transforms from a single phase continuous liquid flow to a single phase continuous vapor flow in between we have bubbly flow regime, slug flow regime, annular flow regime and dispersed flow regime. Here you can see different patterns of flow inside an air water flow. If we go on increasing the percentage of air in this the flow regime also changes. Initially we have a bubbly flow here as we go on increasing the percentage of air the flow gets transformed from bubbly flow into a flow that is similar to annular flow as the bubble sizes increases. In this picture you can see the effect of flow rate as well as the dispersed phase concentration on the flow regime. So as we have seen different type of flow regimes under multiphase flow now we will proceed to multiphase flow models in fluent. Now do keep in mind that in this particular lecture which is an introduction to multiphase flow modeling in fluent we are not going to go into depth into all these models. What we will see is how to activate multiphase flow in fluent and within each panel of multiphase flow settings how to input different parameters and what type of such inputs and panels are available in fluent to model multiphase flow. So this is just like a primer. 
or just like an initial overview of multiphase flow modeling in Fluent. So under multiphase flow modeling in commercial software Fluent, we have four different multiphase models. The discrete phase flow model, DPM, the mixture model, the Eulerian multiphase flow model, and the volume of fluid model. Among these, the discrete phase model, that is a DPM model, is a Lagrangian, Eulerian Lagrangian type of model. The mixture model and Eulerian model are the Eulerian, Eulerian type of model. And the volume of fluid model is of, of course uses the volume of fluid approach. What we have seen is the different type of multiphase flow modeling options available in the commercial software Fluent. But when we sit to uh, simulate our particular problem, the first question that comes to our mind is, which model do I use for this particular project or this particular multiphase flow problem? Now, uh, to resolve this question, there are various guidelines that are presented within multiphase flow study literature as well as within commercial software fluent users guide as well as theory guide. And these guidelines are generally followed for selecting a multiphase flow model. So a type of matrix is available for us in order to select different multiphase flow models depending upon what type of flow regime exists in our problem and then corresponding to that flow regime, which type of models are applicable. So let us start with the first flow regime that is bubbly droplet and particle laden flows in which the volume fraction is less than or equal to 10%. For a such type of flow regime, we usually prefer the DPM model that is the because the Eulerian Lagrangian approach is applicable. Next is the bubbly droplet and particle laden flow that is the same flow regime but in this the dispersed phase volume fraction is more than 10%. In such cases, we cannot use the Eulerian Lagrangian approach and hence we have to use the Eulerian Eulerian approach. For such flows, the Eulerian model or the mixture model is applicable. The next flow type is slug flow for which the VOF model is applicable because we have a distinct or separated phases with an interface between them. Another type is a stratified free surface flow. Again, as we have a free surface and a distinct interface between two phases, we use the volume of fluid model. Next type is pneumatic transport in which homogeneous flow exists. For this we use the mixture model whereas for pneumatic transport granular flows we use the Eulerian model. In case we are modeling fluidized beds we generally use the Eulerian model. For slug flows and hydro transport we can use the Eulerian model or the mixture model. For slurry flows and hydro transport we can use the Eulerian model or the mixture model. In case we need to model sedimentation, it is generally preferred that we use the Eulerian model. Apart from these flow regimes, there are various other guidelines based on some terminologies or some basic physics. These terminologies are defined around the term called particulate loading. Particulate loading is defined as the mass density ratio of dispersed phase to that of the carrier phase. It gives us an indication of how the coupling is there between the dispersed phase and the carrier phase. That is, whether the dispersed phase also affects the flow of the carrier phase or the continuous phase. Is this coupling one way or two way? And also whether there is interaction between two droplets or two particles or two bubbles of the dispersed phase itself. So based on this, there are three types of categories, very low loading, intermediate loading or high loading. When we have very low loading of the dispersed phase, generally the particulate loading number is very low. In such cases, the coupling between the phases is one way, that is, only the continuous phase is affecting the dispersed phase. Dispersed phase is not affecting the flow of the continuous phase. In such cases, we can use the discrete phase model, the mixture model, or the Eulerian model. Let's say if we have intermediate loading in which the particulate loading number or ratio is average. In such cases, the coupling is two-way. That is, the continuous phase is affecting the dispersed phase as well as due to the motion of the dispersed phase, the flow of the continuous phase is also disturbed. Hence, it is two-way coupling. In such cases, we use the discrete phase model, the mixture model and the Eulerian model. So now for high particulate loading, in addition to two-way coupling, there is also particle pressure and viscous stresses due to particles. Hence, it is termed as four-way coupling. In such cases, we use only the Eulerian model. 
So based on these two slides, you got a general idea of what type of flow regimes exist and for a particular flow regime, which multiphase model do I use? Also, you would have got a feel that the commercial software Fluent consists of multiphase models which can model almost all the type of flow regimes which exist in multiphase flow. So if we learn the multiphase modeling in Fluent, we are capable of modeling almost any multiphase problem existing in industry. Now that you know which model to select for a particular flow regime or a particular multiphase model, let us see what are the steps involved in setting up a multiphase model. Before we begin or go into detail of the steps involved, we will have a checklist or a step by step flow chart of what settings you should do in Fluent to set up a multiphase model. First step is to go into model, multiphase, and edit. Is set up your multiphase mo model. Select whichever model you want to do. This is under model tab. Go into multiphase tab, edit tab. After that, you define materials. That is, for the different phases available, what are the physical materials that exist? After defining the material, you define phases. That is, associate the phase name to different material. So whatever number of phases exist, we define those phases. Next, we define the viscous or flow model. That is, either it is a laminar flow or it is a turbulent flow. And within turbulent flow, which turbulence model do we use? Next step is to define the cell zone and operating conditions. That is, within our modeling domain, what are the operating conditions? That is, whether gravity is there, the body force is there, etc. And within each cell zone or domain type of phase exists, define that. Next step in the flow chart is define the boundary condition. That is, at a particular boundary, what type of flow rate is there, what type of velocity, pressure, etc. Also, if a phase exists at that boundary, what type of percentage or type of mass flow rate of that phase exists and how much amount of phase is there at that boundary we define that. After defining that, define the solution methods and solution control. That is, we define various discretization schemes for the phases as well as the continuous flow. And also, we define the under relaxation parameters, etc. All the numerical technique related terminologies we define under define solution methods and solution control. When we go into initialize and patch, that is, when we begin the calculations, how much amount of phase in, is involved within the domain and the boundaries, we define that, either by giving the volume fraction or any other terms. After that, we solve the model. So these are basically the checklist or a step-by-step -step procedure. And whenever you set up multiphase model, you follow this procedure because you will be able to make the process more efficient. And also, you will be able to check whether you have forgotten any settings or if there are any errors or any corrections to be made in the settings. Now let us go into detail of the various inputs required and which panels or which settings do we change in order to give these inputs. Now, the first step to set up a multiphase model is to turn on the multiphase model in Fluent. That is, we go to problem setup, we go to model, and turn the multiphase model on. As we go here, this particular option appears under models and we click here on multiphase flow model and turn it on. As you can see, right now it is off. Once we do that, the next is to go into the multiphase panel tab. That is, whenever you click here, this particular tab appears. This particular panel appears. Within this panel, there are various options like model, number of phases, the multiphase flow model parameters, the volume fraction parameters, etc. These settings are specific to models. That is, if you select VOF in place of Eulerian, as shown in the figure, these parameters will change and you will see various other parameters appearing here depending upon which model we use. So we select the model here, that is we can either select volume of fluid, mixture, Eulerian or wet steam or we can totally turn off the model. After that, we input how many phases exist in our problem here. Then we change the model specific parameters here. After that, we change the schemes for volume fraction here. Next step is to define phases. So after we turn on the multiphase models, we go into the multiphase model panel. This is how the multiphase model panel looks like in commercial software Fluent. Now the first thing that we should do is set the number of phases involved. That is, in our problem, how many number of distinct phases are we going to model? We can edit this number here. Then we select which multiphase model are we going to use. Here are the options that are available. That is the volume of fluid or the mixture, Eulerian or wet steam. We are showing the Eulerian model in this particular slide. 
below the model section there is a region called as model parameters within this various sub models available within the main multiphase model can be selected as shown here the eulerian parameters are shown within the eulerian we have either the dis dense discrete phase model the boiling model or the immiscible fluid model if we select some other model like vof these parameters will change accordingly these are specific to which model we are going to use below that is a region called volume fraction parameters here we select the scheme which is going to be used for volume fraction calculations that is either the explicit scheme or the implicit scheme so this is how the multiphase model panel looks like and we select the basic parameters available here as well as the number of phases the next thing to do is define the phases involved in our modeling this is available under problem setup and phases we click on this phases option and then the phases section comes up here we set individual phases their names and their properties the first phase is the primary phase and whatever remaining phases below that are the secondary phases we can also select interaction between different phases by clicking on interaction and setting whatever interaction we want we will see the interaction panel later we can also model species transport or reactions along with multiphase for that we have to go into problem setup models and then turn on the species model as shown here the species model panel opens up and we have to click on species transport within the species transport there is a section called phase properties now let's say there are there are reactions between different phases for that we have to change these phase properties for those reactions and species transport so we select on this set and we edit the different phases involved by clicking on this set button now once we click on the set button the phase properties panel opens up this is how it looks like here we edit the materials that are associated with that particular phase as shown here we are selecting the phase 2 and here are the material that is methane air for that particular phase we can also select the number of volumetric species involved number of solid species involved and number of site species as well as we have an option of full multi component diffusion available here we will discuss all these in detail in the advanced lecture but right now what we have to remember is under the species transport option we have a panel to set up the phase properties within the species transport model now we have seen in the earlier slide there was an interaction button when we define the phase that is this particular button once we click that button we enter into a panel called as phase interaction now various options are available to define interaction between the different phases that are been modeled the interaction between phases can be in the form of drag lift collisions slip heat transfer mass transfer species reactions surface tension and discrystallization we will see the reaction tab here within the reaction tab we can define the number of reactions that we are going to model we can define the chemistry solver then we give the name for that particular reaction an id for that reaction and we can define the number of reactants and number of products to define the particular reaction between species or phases we have to give all these inputs that is which phase is involved in the reaction what are the species that is the chemical species associated with that phase the stoichiometric coefficient the rate exponent etc so within the multiphase model we can also model chemical reactions by associating different chemical species to respective phases for defining these reactions we have to go into the interaction tab and the interaction panel next is mass transfer within the same in phase interaction panel we also have a tab called mass transfer it is similar to the reaction tab that is we define mass transfer mechanism the number of mass transfers for each mass transfer we define how that mass transfer is going to occur by defining different mechanisms for mass transfer we also define chemical species associated with the phases and within this mass transfer panel we also define from which phase to which phase is this mass going to transfer 
So the entire mass transfer mechanism can be defined within the phase interaction panel. Within the same mass transfer mechanism, we can model different physical phenomena that are occurring when we model multiphase. The different mechanisms available are cavitation or evaporation condensation or by using constant rate mass transfer mechanism. Within this mechanism option, we can select the different mass transfer mechanisms. As you can see here, for cavitation modeling, two different models are available. We have to define the cavitation properties and the model constants. All these details available with the cavitation model will be discussed in the advanced lectures that will be coming in the later part. All you have to remember now is that within the mass transfer mechanism tab in the phase interaction panel what we have is we can model cavitation as well as we can model evaporation and condensation. Similar to cavitation, the condensation and evaporation model also has different parameters that we have to input like the model constants and evaporation condensation properties like saturation temperature. All these detailed inputs are to be given when we model evaporation and condensation as a mass transfer mechanism. Now once we have defined the phase interaction, the next step that we have to do is we have to define cell zone condition for different phases that is within the domain how our phases are going to behave or in which domain which different phases are going to exist when we start the simulation. So this is available in the problem setup cell zone conditions. We click on the fluid that is the zone what either it is a fluid zone or a solid zone for phases it has to be a fluid zone. We click on the fluid zone within the fluid zone there are three options available to us that is we can define the properties or we can define the behavior of mixture mixture is meaning the mixture of different phases that is the phase one and phase two in this case or we can define behavior of phase one individually and phase two individually different options will appear in the cell zone condition panel that is the fluid panel once we click that the mixture or the phase one or the phase two we can define source terms associated with different phases. We can define mesh motion. We can define porous porosity that is the porous zone modeling. We can define reactions etc. Next step is to set the boundary condition. As you can see if we click on a boundary then select that particular boundary name we have different options that is we can set the boundary condition for either the mixture or the phase 1 or the phase 2 whichever is applicable for that particular multiphase model. So we select one of these three then change the type of the boundary and then click edit. So we enter into the boundary type panel in which we have the boundary name we have the phase for which we are setting the boundary condition and you can set the different boundary conditions applicable here. This is a velocity inlet boundary condition so we are setting the velocity of the mixture phase. Now in this we can also select phase 1 and or phase 2 and enter into setting the boundary conditions for the phases. If we select the phase what we can see is a multiphase boundary condition in which we give the volume fraction of that particular phase at that particular velocity inlet. So this is a volume fraction boundary condition for phase 2. The procedure is same that we enter into boundary condition we click the boundary then we click the phase that we want to set the boundary condition for the type of the boundary and click edit. Then we go into the multiphase tab and set the volume fraction of that particular phase. Once you have set all the cell zone and boundary conditions the next step is to set the solution settings. Now for a single phase flow you already know solution settings that we discuss in the fluent lectures. In this there are some solution settings specific to multiphase flow. For this we enter into problem setup that is here we go into solutions then we go into solution methods. Once we are into solution methods we can see different numerical schemes that is for pressure velocity coupling we have simple for spatial discretization also we have different schemes as well as transient formulation. Now under these whichever model you are selecting whichever multiphase model you are selecting the spatial discretization schemes for that particular multiphase model will appear here like like for VOF model we have geo reconstruct scheme that is appearing in the special discretization. So we can select these specific schemes relating 
to the multi-phase flow and we set up this solution method for the multi-phase flow option also. The last step is to set the initial conditions. This is important in case of transient problems where you have initial volume fraction present and depending upon those your solution progresses. So we go to solution settings, solution methods and we do solution initialization. So we set up the so initial volume fraction for that particular phase. Once we have done the initialization, we click initialize and then we solve the problem by going into run calculation. We run the iterations. So this is how the entire process flow is for setting up a multi-phase flow problem in Fluent. We have discussed which tabs we go into, which options we go into and how do we progress from problem setup right to the end where we run the solution. So this lecture has familiarized you with the modeling setup of a multi-phase problem in Fluent that is how to progress step by step while setting up a multi-phase flow inside Fluent. You are now familiar with the user interface and which windows and which tabs open when we select multi-phase flow, how to select our multi-phase flow model, set those models, set up the entire problem and then solve. You are familiar with all this process. This lecture also provided a guidance in order to select a multi-phase flow model that is for a specific problem which multi-phase flow model is applicable and how do you select that. The next step that you could try is solve a multi-phase problem tutorial by which you will further get understanding of the entire solution setup. These are some of the references used as guidance for these lectures. Thank you for viewing this particular lecture. See you in the next lecture.